Hi everyone and Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to our first webinar for the year. Um, welcome back to work if you've just uh, gone back in the last week or two. I hope you had great holidays. Um, my name is Charles Clark and I'm the Marketing Director here at BOMA and I'm joined by Luz Stadom, who's our Content Marketing Manager. Hi Liz. Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Fantastic. So um, thanks so much for giving up your time. We really appreciate it. And um, hopefully you'll find this session really, really useful. Um, what we often find, uh, you know, with people on these, on these webinars is that, um, you know, they're looking at a, at a software like BOMA because um, they've got some marketing challenges. Um, and so often we find that uh, our users, you know, they find marketing quite difficult. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, when you're um, an accountant or a bookkeeper um, or maybe another professional services um, professional, uh, you didn't study marketing. So knowing that you need to do some, um, it's kind of quite hard to know where to begin. So that's one thing we often find. Um, other sort of issues we come across is that often, you know, marketing in the past can be quite expensive. You might have to pay for a couple of different products, um, maybe uh, a social media one, maybe an email platform, you might have to also have people write your content for you, maybe find some images. So before you know it, um, the money really starts to add up every month. Um, and that's just to do some marketing. Um, and lastly, it's, it's often time consuming. So we know that you guys are all really busy. And so if someone said, look, you need to um, spend 10 or 12 hours a week doing marketing, not many people have that time, or at least not unless you're outsourcing it to a third party, which obviously gets pretty expensive. So. The whole premise behind BOMA is how can we basically address all of those and, and help you with your marketing. So um, we know that for accounts and bookkeepers, um, the industry has really changed in the last five years. And, and in the past, it was, it was easier to um, just rely on word of mouth and the marketing that the um, IRD does on your behalf. You know, everyone has to, um, has to do their accounts, but the rise of, of automation and cloud-based accounting software. Um, it's really, really important nowadays that um, you're not known just for doing um, basic accounts. It's really all about moving into advisory and obviously how do you tell your current clients or prospective clients about that? How do you communicate your expertise um, out there? And, and while some people might um, have the, the time and the money to sort of run print ads and maybe radio ads or um, sort of magazine ads, um, for most people, uh, the biggest resource um, is, the, is the internet. So socially um, and email are the two big ones that um, are the most, I suppose, cost effective and easiest to get hold of. And, and that's what we've really designed BOMA for is to take advantage of um, the internet. Um, and so we created BOMA to, to allow you to do that. So. Um, just one other thing before we get started. Um, it'd be really interesting to hear what your biggest marketing or businesses challenges are at the moment. Um, you can see that you can uh, just type it down in the, in the chat section. Just really love to hear what they might be and also where you're from. I'm, I know we've got some people here from New Zealand and Australia. Um, maybe we've got some people from further afield as well. Um, so let's get into it. Um, I'll hand over to Liz and she can take us through setup. So, um, yeah, guys, just what uh, Charles said about the pain points. Um, BOMA was designed in order to overcome those barriers. Um, and marketing is more than just uh, growing your business and promotion. It's also about sharing insight and adding value for your existing clients. So BOMA starts by taking time, cost, complexity out of marketing. The first thing is it's multi-channel. So it's not just email. It's also Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, it gives you access to 600,000 free images. You don't need to go searching for those. There's a library of images within BOMA that you can use for your um, social posts and emails. Um, BOMA has also created this content library, and we'll look at this in a minute. If I scroll down on my screen, you should be able to see the content library. Um, that is a library of articles that we add to every week with really um, relevant and useful um, insight, guides, uh, advice that you can share with your clients. So it kickstarts your campaign and you can customize it the way you want. Um, so first up, I think we'll look at uh, set up for your account. We'll go through this quite quickly. Charlie, do you wanna take us through that? Great. Um, so the first thing to do is to connect to a social account. So this is if you have them, if, if you don't have them, you don't have to worry about the step, but 
Um, obviously, connecting to social is a really fantastic way to start uh, talking to um, your audience. So it's really, really easy. Um, if you come to this page and where it says uh, disconnect the button, um, that will just be a blue connect button and you just simply click on that. Um, as, and as long as you've logged into Facebook or any of the other social networks on the same browser, then all your, um, all your login details will be saved and it will just connect for you. Um, and it will connect to your business page. So um, Facebook and Twitter don't connect to your personal pages. Um, LinkedIn, however, does connect to your personal profiles. So just something to keep in mind um, if you want to ever send out a personal post on LinkedIn as well as your business post, um, you can do that. Once they are connected, you'll see that um, it says here, huge accounting is connected to BOMA. Um, that will obviously read with you know, the name of your business is now connected to BOMA. Um, once you've done that, if you are um, a Zero HQ user, you can also link your account to HQ. You just go to linked accounts and again, click on the blue connect button. Uh, and again, it'll ask for permission and as long as you've got those already logged in, it will just do it um, all automatically. Um, I've just had someone saying, uh, uh, is anyone else having trouble hearing us? Um, ben, is that any better at all? Can you hear us more clearly now? I'm so. Oh, great. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Ben. Great. Okay, so once you have um, set up your social accounts, the next stage is to import any contacts that you may have. Um, so it's really, really easy. Just go to the contacts page and here you can um, export, whether it's from XPM or another, another email server, you can um, import um, a CSV file in here. So um, it's, just a, it's just a case of really creating that CSV file on your laptop um, and then importing them in here. Once you have imported them, um, you can go through to contacts and you'll see everyone that you've imported in here as well. Uh, and then um, clicking on an individual contact will show you um, any of their details. So uh, you can obviously, if you have their details, you, you they'll be pulled in. Um, you can obviously add in any other details, you know, whether it's their gender, date of birth, phone number, etc. cetera. Um, a really good thing to do also is to tag them. So when you import them, it's great to tag them. So maybe they're a client, or they're not a client, or they use zero, or they don't use zero, whatever way makes sense to you. Um, the reason what we suggest to tag them is that then when you send emails in the future, you can segment. So you said, like, great, I want to send an email to only my clients or to my non-clients. Um, then you can use tags to basically segment your, um, your database. Um, once you're um, uploaded your contacts, um, just the final step is to set up your um, brand logo and colors. Uh, and what we do here is really nice. So um, if you upload your logo um, and then it will actually pull in the logo and you can see on the left here um, that we've got all the, we've got all the brand colors. So uh, the top one is the colors pulled from your logo, um, the blue and the yellow in this case. And we've also got some other colors which you can use as well. And, and that's for the background. So at the moment we've got a white background, but obviously if we flip through a couple of different colors, you can see um, the changes uh, are made. And then that's for all your emails in Boma. Um, also, we um, like to make sure that your buttons uh, are also in brand colors. So again, you can choose from any of your brand colors um, as you wish or any other colors um, as makes sense to you. Um, so once you're happy with that, uh, click on next. And then in this page, um, we just add a couple of, couple more details. So um, your physical address or PO box is really important. Um, uh, all, all the marketing we do in Boma is permission based. So that means that you need to have your, your email, um, so your, your address at the bottom of your emails and your, your time zone, your country, um, that's critical. Um, your, your time zone to make sure that when you schedule an email or a social post, it goes out at the right time. And then your country or region, that just makes sure that the content libraries um, so if you're a New Zealand uh, content library for zero, then you want to make sure that they're not talking, say, about the VAT, which if you selected um, the UK, um, you would get, yeah. Um, then the final stage is just to add your from name and your from email address, um, and then that will be uh, put into all your emails, and you can obviously um, change that at a later date if you want, um, and then just to add any social accounts. So um, whether it's Facebook or Google+, or Instagram, 
um, and also to add in your website address. Uh, and these just make sure that on every email that you send out, um, there's a range of icons down the bottom of each email, and then it just helps your users be able to connect onto those platforms more easily. Great, so that's set up finished. So let's um, get a campaign started. Okay, so um, apologies for those that couldn't hear in the beginning, but if, um, if uh, we probably could just quickly recap that we're taking cost, time, complexity out of marketing, so we're making it very easy. The first way um, to create a campaign would be to click on the Create button. We're gonna show you there's a number of ways in Boma to do it. But what Boma allows you to do is send an email newsletter. You can send a social media update, and that is LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, sorry, not Instagram here, but LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, whatever you create, Boma will make sure that it is formatted for the channel you choose, so you don't need to then go into each social channel and create another campaign. You can do it all at once here with a couple of easy steps, and Boma will make sure that it goes out in the right format. If you want to send to both email and social, you can send to all three channels. And what that means is that, um, for example, your social posts are seen by the fans and followers of that page. If you want to reach a wider audience, you could create a social media ad, and then you put a little bit of budget behind it, and you have um, some specific targets that you want to reach, a target audience you want to reach, and you can create a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad. Landing pages we'll also look at. This is a great way to capture email addresses. Um, it could be that you've written a guide and you want people to download it. They put their email address into a landing page to download the guide. It could be registrations for an event or it could be sign-ups for your newsletter and we'll look at that as well. For the purposes of the demo, we're going to start with the content library. So Boma has created this content library in order to answer a, a need in the market, particularly for professional services and especially for accountants and bookkeepers, um, where it is now, um, the industry has changed away from uh, compliance only into compliance and advisory, with a lot of the um, accounting software taking over the compliance side of things. That advisory role is obviously um, really important, and in order to fulfill that role and show people um, what your skills and expertise is and add value to your clients, um, you need to start sending, I'm just going to take that and get that off and take that other library out. Um, you need to start sending um, useful advice and guides and things that can add value to your clients or potentially uh, show and grow awareness on social of the sorts of things that you do. So if we look at, for example, a piece of content, this content library is added to every week. Uh, there's content by Zero and there's content by Boma. It's very high quality. You can customize it exactly the way you want and we'll look at how you can do that. So it showed you here, um, there's a little um, summary of what a social media post would look like. It is even suggested hashtags. All of that you can change as you go through and what the email content looks like. So you can have a look at that um, before you decide what content you'd like to send. When you're happy with the content, click deliver this content. For this demo, we're gonna choose all my channels. Um, and at this point, you can change the name to something that's relevant to you, but it's not seen by your um, recipients, so um, you can leave that as, we'll leave that as it is at the moment. First stage is really just confirming the image and the text, and if you want to change it for all your channels, you can do that here. I'm gonna change it for the individual channels, and I think that is an important thing to note, that each channel is a bit different. You're gonna be um, talking to a different audience, and the, the tone of voice is a bit different too. So your LinkedIn company page might be a bit more professional, your Facebook um, post might be a little bit more relaxed. Um, so under each channel, you can then go in and write uh, your own text. Um, so a business plan is vital for the success or something. Um, you can put whatever you like in here. Um, so obviously, I'm sure you're going to write something a bit better than that. You can change these hashtags. It might be that you've got um, a hashtag that you use. Hashtags are like a little search engine, um, particularly on, um, on channels such as Twitter. They're a way you can actually search for content using a hashtag, um, and you can start grouping your content um, using a hashtag. The rules are really just no spaces and no um, punctuation, although you can put caps in there to, um, to make it easier to read. 
Um, and then the other thing is just simply make it really relevant to the content uh, and probably don't overdo it. So that's our um, LinkedIn post. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna just look at LinkedIn personal. At the moment that's the same, but um, I would probably change that because that's my personal LinkedIn and I'd make something a little bit. This is a great article. This is some, you know, we really like, enjoy working with small businesses and something a bit more personal. On Twitter, you can see that there is a counter here. So if I start typing, you can see that the counter goes down and um, that gives you the opportunity to understand exactly how long you've got before you're at the character limit. Facebook is a little bit different and Facebook doesn't uh, allow third party apps to post or at least write the post comment uh, on your behalf and that's in order to combat fake news. So um, my little workaround is that I've copied it out of LinkedIn and pasted it in, but obviously you're gonna potentially start from scratch and write your own little Facebook post there. Uh, and then an email, uh, you now get to review and edit. So the first thing we'll do is, Charlie talked about the tags earlier, we might want to deliver to specific contacts. So um, if, you've, if you've got your tags based, say for example, we choose agriculture on an industry or across all small business, it means that you can be really relevant and, and offer them specific insight that's relevant to them. Uh, so I really recommend using tags in your contact database so that you're not just um, sending people things that aren't relevant to them and then them unsubscribing. So we're gonna send them to agriculture. Uh, I am then going to look at subject and the sender details. So at this point you could change the sender details. It might be someone else in your firm that, that's more relevant uh, that this is coming from. Subject line is populated for you and the preview description. This is worth looking at because it's the summary that um, people see in their email browser. So you wanna make sure it's something that um, motivates them to open your email. Final step is select the template. There are a number of options here. One of them is your previous emails. And it may be that you've spent quite a bit of time on an email in the past and you're really happy the way it looks, so you want to use that. Instant templates are great for the content library. They inject the content in, the, in them, and that's what we'll use today. But quickly, I'll show you the theme templates. Those are if you're starting from scratch. So they don't inject content uh, into these templates, but if you wanted to start a newsletter and you wanted something uh, as, a, as, a, as a guide in order to inject images and start typing, you can use these. So we'll go back to instant templates and select one of those. I've chosen Big Content Basic. When this opens up, we'll see that the logo that Charles uploaded will be there um, and the colors for our business. Now you can change all of this. You can customize whatever you like in here. So for example, we could type um, a personal greeting. I'm gonna type straight into, click straight into this email and choose a personal greeting with a space. Click on merge tags and choose the first name, comma, space, and that will pull the name out of my contact list for the, for the, the um, contacts that we've selected to send this email to. We could go down and say, right, well, I'm not very, um, I'm not sure about this last, it, I'm going to change that or I'm going to delete it. Um, if we look at the editing tools on the right here, you can see that the settings applies to the whole of the email and that's colors and fonts. I'm not going to change that today, but you certainly can. The rows, um, Boma gives you really easy to use injectable um, templates here. So say for example, we wanted to add a whole lot more content, come to the bottom here and you could drag that in and then it's simply a matter of populating that with images, titles, and text, and buttons. I'm gonna delete that one, um, but what I would like to add is a button. I'm gonna bring that into this row here uh, because I want people to get in touch with us. So the button at the moment doesn't mean, any, mean very much because it just says button, so all you need to do there is select the text, change it to something that you'd like it to say, and then over on the right-hand side, choose the action for that button. So open a web page could be your contact us page. Uh, send an email could be opening an email in their email browser that, that comes to you. Make a call and send an SMS, obviously more relevant if they're reading it on their phone. If you think it's likely that they'll read it on their laptop or computer, um, then I think that the first two are probably more relevant here. So send an email might be, just a matter of just 
putting in your email address, the subject was business planning, and it might be the first line here might be, uh, I'd like to make a time to talk about my uh, putting together a plan for my business, and the rest of them they can write. We could also here change the image, and I'm going to show you here um, how you might do that in order to show you the image library. So we've clicked on change image. When you get into um, the image file manager, you can upload images from your computer. You can import them, or you could use images that you've used before, and you can search free photos. Just a matter there of typing in a search term, clicking return, and then choosing an image that is relevant for your email. So we've said business plan, so um, at the risk of being a little bit uh, cliche, we're going to choose a tree. Growth might have been a better search term here, but um, you can see that the options are limitless there. You can continue to search, but you don't need to go out and choose other images. I'm going to see if there's a better one here for us. Um, and uh, that, then simply add that into your email. You can also do that in your social posts, and we can go back and look at that. When you're happy with all the changes that you've made, save and close. And you can also send yourself a test email. So if we go back into email here, you can see that you can send yourself a test email. And I'd really recommend doing that to yourself or someone in the office. Make sure you're happy with the content uh, before it goes out. You can also preview all the social channels by clicking on the preview button for each channel. So that's what your tweet will look like. And here's what your Facebook post will look like. Just one thing to note, um, at the moment, for the purposes of this demo, we're showing you every single, um, uh, every single ch channel, but say you only had um, two, so say you had maybe LinkedIn and Facebook, when you chose all channels, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you wouldn't see ones that you hadn't connected. Um, and if halfway through you decide, look, actually I want to um, remove Twitter, uh, you just click on the checkbox and it will be removed um, yeah, so just, just to confirm that um, if you don't have channels or you don't want to send them to all, you just want to send them to most of them, you can play with those in there and, and add and delete them um, very easily. And you can also at this point go, oh, I forgot, I haven't already connected my Twitter account, so perhaps that's not, you're not seeing that there. You can connect more here at that point. Yeah. So last step is to schedule. Uh, you can either send it immediately or if it's got very late in the day or you know that you've got a busy week ahead and you want to schedule some posts uh, for um, a future date, simply select a time and date. It will default to your local time zone. It's unlikely you're going to change that, but it may be that you're going to an event um, overseas, in which case that's possible. Um, you can change the time zone. So we're going to select to send it tomorrow, uh, say at 10.15 in the morning schedule campaign and that campaign is gone. And if we now go back to the dashboard and go into campaigns, you can see that my campaign there is scheduled. It's worth also looking at this because you can see all the campaigns that we've sent um, in the past. Now this is a demo account, so it's not gonna have some fabulous figures, but Boma also gives you all the analytics and insights for your campaign. So across each uh, channel you can see on Facebook, um, we're in email at the moment. Let's go back into Facebook. You can see the clicks, shares, likes, and comments. And again, across your other social channels, the relevant um, reactions and how, how people have reacted and what it looks like. If we do go into email, though, you can see what sort of numbers were processed and delivered. If there are any issues there with your email addresses, for example, and you've got bounce backs, so you'll be able to understand that there. And if I do click on that button, I can also see uh, the names of the people that received that email. So that's useful because you can then go in and say, um, okay, well, well, Jane showed a lot of interest in that, um, in that campaign and she's often engaged with other campaigns on that topic. I'm going to send her more. So that is, in a nutshell, how to send your campaign. And we'll just click back to the dashboard. And should we have a look at a um, should we look at combining a social and landing page? Do you think? Yeah. So let's yeah. look at let's look at landing pages. 
landing pages, um, uh, I'm going to actually, rather than create a new one, I'm going to look at some landing pages that we've created in the past. So landing pages could be got lots of uses for your business. Uh, could be that you want a want people to sign up. And when we go into, whoops, we're going into submissions there. Let's look at the design. You name your landing page. You give it a, you give it, um, a heading so that when people land on it, they can see what they're signing up for. Uh, you can put your body copy in there, your instructions, and you can decide. Obviously, you do need email. That's that's um, mandatory. But whether you need their first name, last name, whether you want their phone number here, if we click on that, you can see that's added. You can also look at. I need to uh, include a terms and conditions checkbox, and that means that you're getting their permission to email them in the future. So that's important. If we go into post submit, you can then decide what sort of text you'd like to pop up once they've filled out that form. And you can either um, send them that, show them that message, or you could send them to a custom page. So um, say for example, you have written a four page guide on tax, you've turned that into a PDF and you're hosting that on your website, perhaps on a page that is not easily found in the menu of your website. You could uh, put a post on social saying, um, uh, download our easy guide on tax. When they fill in that form, uh, then you can send them to the custom page where they can download that PDF. So that's a great lead generation tool. Back on the beginning, you can see once we've made all our changes and saved our landing page, there is a URL here which you can use. So if, for example, you want a button on your website that says sign up to our newsletter, then that would be where your button sends them to and then they are filling out that landing page. Once they've filled it out, they're entered into your contact list. And you can also go into your landing pages and look at the submissions and when, when those were made. So other uses for a landing page might be a sign up for an event. Uh, so you've got newsletter, sign up for an event, for example, um, the downloadable guide, and you could potentially use it for a promotion. So if we look at one here, which we've done in the past, we said, okay, we want to build um, build our business and grow um, grow our client base. We want to reach people in our local area and say, let's offer one hour free advisory with their business. Uh, we'll make coffee. There's no obligation, but obviously within that um, time, we want to convince them that they, know, they want to work with you. With each landing page, something I should say is that you do add a tag to that person that enters that um, into, into their details into the landing page, and that way you can contact them. So if we're going to use this um, landing page, let's look at, I'm going to open BOMA under another tab, and we're going to create a social ad to use that, um, that promotional offer. So we start with social media ad and define the audience. I'm going to use just Facebook on this one, and I'm going to go to my local area. More targeted you can be, whoops, not Missouri. Take that one off. In your uh, in type, you can be in your targeting. The um, uh, the better your budget can work, the harder your budget can work, I should say. So we were going to target small businesses. So let's go for someone a little bit older here, and then start putting some interest in to define that audience. Now, interest is different to um, what you might put in for a Google ad. If people are on Google and they're looking for you, they're going to put accounting in. But if they're on Facebook, they're not necessarily looking for you. They're looking for things that interest them. So it could be anything from rugby. Um, it could be that um, they, it's, it could be education. It could be events. Um, it could be to do with their business. Say if we're, we're looking at bringing in construction clients, we might put building material that they're looking at on Facebook. Um, and you simply start typing the search term and choose from the drop down. And on this one, it's probably quite useful to, uh, if you've got clients say that you think, look, I want more of those clients, so say it's more building and construction clients, you might have a think about, um, you know, because you've got a relationship with them, you know, what do they like to do? You know, are, you know do they, are they interested in rugby? Um, you know, are they interested in, um, in, in travel or fishing or, but you know, you'll have a picture in your head about, you know, who these people are, um, and then that can maybe advise you in terms of, you know, uh, who you might like to target on Facebook. So you sort of basically say, okay, if my ideal client looks like this, then how would I translate that into a Facebook interest 
Um, and you know, there's literally thousands and thousands of interests. And it's not just what they've done on Facebook, it's what they're interested in across the internet. So Facebook has a pixel so it can track users across the internet. So um, if they are on Facebook just looking at cats, that's fine because you know on the web, we look at the building materials and say in this case, uh, rugby and fishing, um, then Facebook will understand that and then be able to target those sorts of people. Yeah, I think that's a really, really useful point to make with all your marketing um, activities. Think about who you're talking to and you're always going to be uh, more relevant. Um, and you don't need to make that person up. You can think about your ideal client, the one that you would like more of, um, and build your persona around them. And then once you've got um, that sort of idea in your head, then it's easier to understand who you're talking to, what you want to say. Okay, and then you set your um, timeline. So we're starting... Uh, on January the 24th, which is tomorrow, I think um, worthwhile just running for one week. Um, and that means that if it's going really well, you can always run it again. And if it's not working quite the way you want to, you can, you can make tweaks to that. Put a bit of budget behind that and save it. And then we'll go to the next step, which is defining uh, our content. So the first step is the image. Our landing page was saying we're gonna make you coffee while we give you free advice. So let's choose a nice image with perhaps a coffee cup. Save and continue. And define the continent. And when it comes to writing um, the ad copy, so obviously, um, again, think about what would interest those people. So there's no point um, if you're, say in this case, going after um, sort of small business construction people who are just in rugby and fishing, no point talking um, sort of in a very uh, tight way about how you might um, uh, sort of increase the yield by sort of 10%. Um, maybe think about, you know, a more colloquial sort of uh, fun tone, something that when they're looking through, they're like, oh, that, that's the sort of person that I would trust and I would like to sort of see what they have to say. So um, just think of, yeah, think how you would like to be spoken to if you were that person um, and then sort of write the copy accordingly. And, and if you do that, you'll find it, um, is much easier to get the tone um, and, and, the, and the copy right. And, and it'll also be authentic because it'll, um, you know, ultimately it will be coming from you and, and you don't want there to be a big disconnect between what you say, um, say in, a, in an ad or, or a social post and then when they get to meet you, you're completely different and they're sort of not sure who, which is a real you. So just keep that in mind as well. So I've started writing some copy. I'm sure you're right better copy than that, but it gives you an idea of, of what we're trying to achieve. Um, we've got a headline, we've got a little bit of post content, we know what our target audience is. On the website URL, this is where the button's gonna go to. So let's choose an action for the button. So we want them to contact us or book now, book a time. And then we're gonna go back into our landing page. One hour free advisory with your business and we'll make the coffee. We're selecting to, um, we've decided we're gonna get their email, first name, last name and phone number. Um, and we're going to tag them. Choose, copy that URL, back into our ad, paste that URL, and there you've got um, a social post that can go out to grow your business, targeting people in your local area, with one hour free advisory. When they click on book now, they come through the landing page. They'll then be entered into your contact list with the tag, and you can make contact with them, and that's, um, the, then the rest is up to you. So last step is to just preview and be happy with um, all of the steps uh, in that campaign, your audience, your budget, your time frame, and your content mm. and deliver. And just on, the, on that note of budget, I had a um, good question, um, which was about any recommendation on budget when starting out with Facebook ads. Uh, so it's, I'll answer this in two ways. The first way is it's a bit like a piece of string. Um, you can spend obviously, uh, you know, what might be a lot of money for some people won't be a lot of money for other people. So, um, so it really depends on your personal circumstances. You know, if um, you know if you've got a big practice, then maybe spending a uh, hundred dollars a day isn't a lot. Um, if you're a small operation, then you might want to spend ten dollars a day. So that's kind of in terms of you know what is what is a small amount to sort of start off with. In terms of a personal recommendation, um, I would definitely suggest. Um, starting on the lower side of things. So you might want to say, look, I want to spend 
ten dollars a day for five days. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an investment of fifty dollars, um, and then see how that goes because um, you know you'll learn um, as you proceed with it. You know what's resonating, what's working. Um, you know, there's no point going and spending a thousand dollars on a campaign because you know maybe um, you weren't targeting the right people or, or the image you had wasn't quite right. So start off small, small, um, maybe ten dollars a day, and then and do a few of them. And sort of you know once you've done a couple of them, look back and say, okay, of these two or three campaigns, which one gave me the best results? And you'll see pretty quickly that um, you know what's working. So it, just from sort of advice on, on, on these sorts of ads, um, copy is really important. So short and snappy um, and, and sort of something that explains to the reader yeah, what it is yeah. that they're gonna get. Mm -hmm. So no, no, don't be sort of vague, you know, make them have to work. Be really clear about what it is that you're asking them to do. Is it, is it book now or get something or sign up? Mm -hmm. um, and then also think about the um, imagery. And we had a very funny case where a, um, a user of ours uh, couldn't understand why their ad hadn't performed, and we looked at the at the at the image, and the image was of a woman crying, and 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 I understood what he was trying to do, which is basically in his mind he was saying, um, you know, you're really depressed because your old accountant isn't working very well, and so we'll help you, you know, we'll fix that for you. You don't need to be um, the person crying. But obviously, if you think about when someone's scrolling down through Facebook and they see a sad image of someone who's crying, well, that doesn't really, uh, that is not piquing my interest. It's like, oh, I must click on that, you know. So think about the imagery, something engaging, something possibly colourful, something that is going to resonate with your audience. So if you're speaking to people who you think might uh, maybe say they're based in the country, um, don't send them a photo of a big city. Um, scape and vice versa or if you think they're really interested in, in a particular sport or travel you know be be relevant um, with your imagery because if you know they're interested in that then that will help them um, I suppose will resonate with them yeah. so yeah it's it's not just the budget that you do it's it's all the, it's all the elements so as you said you know it's the copy it's the content it's the call to action um, but as we said start small experiment learn what works and um, you know, and within a not too long a period, so like a, a week or two, yes, you'll yes. start to get an idea of what's working. Then you can start to put a bit more budget in. So yes, I mean, I hope that answers your question a little bit. And you, you are only, I think, worth adding there. You're only charged for the people that click on that ad. So um, if there is credit remaining because you've put a bigger budget in, then then your ad can deliver on or for that specific target. Um, you're just charged for people that click. Um, a Facebook ad is a bit different to a boosted post. Um, sometimes when you put a post on Facebook, Facebook goes, oh, that's performing better than, than others, boost it. Uh, that's fine, but your targeting in a Facebook ad is a lot more sophisticated. It means that the ad does not appear on your feed, so you might go, well, where is it? It's appearing on other people's feeds. Your Facebook ad uh, exists for the time period that you've, you've um, decided. Uh, that's really good for promotion, so it means it doesn't doesn't continue to stay on your feed after the promotion's over. Um, and it has um, the, the advantage over just a booster post of being a bit more sophisticated in, in your ability to target people. So um, that's about it for the Facebook post. I am gonna just um, exit this campaign and show you one more uh, campaign that I think is useful to send out, one more, one more feature in BOMA. And that is that um, sometimes creating the campaign might be based on something that you have read. So you, you've got your content library, you may be writing your own blog post, or you may be seeing things online that you really think are useful for your audience. So let's look at how you might do that. Let's create a social media update, um, and we can call that whatever we like here, as, as said before. Um, you can start with an image and text. I'm gonna start with a website URL. So this might be because I've written a blog, I've put it on my website, I want to bring people back to my website, I don't really want to go in and create another campaign on Facebook, a, camp, a, a post on LinkedIn, a post on Twitter. I want to do it once. Um, or I've seen something online that's really relevant and I want to do it once. Okay, so let's, I'm going to paste a URL of that blog post. I'm going to go into Boma's uh, marketing resources page and you will find lots of really useful um, content in here. I'm going to choose a um, piece, uh, a blog post, highlight and select and copy the URL. 
back into BOMA and paste that URL. And what BOMA does then is it creates a campaign for you. So this is a really easy way to create campaigns from your blog posts or, um, or from something you've read online. Now it takes the hero image and it does take a lot of that first copy. So you do need to do a little bit of editing um, when you get to the next step, because you'll see that Twitter will have a, a large sign saying this is too long. But then it's simply a matter of um, just highlighting and removing some or totally changing what that post comment will be. In Twitter, make sure you do keep that URL so that you're bringing them back to the long form content. Again, in your LinkedIn uh, and in your Facebook posts, just uh, decide what you want as your comment and then you've got a campaign that can go out uh, ready-made. Mm. And this could also be, um, as I said, whether it's something um, interesting that you've read, or maybe it's a product or service um, that you have to offer as well. I mean, that's um, often often the refrain we hear from the accounts and bookies we speak to is uh, our clients don't know all the services we offer. Um, you know, they know we offer some, you know, the run-of-the-mill ones, but there's all these other things we offer. And often when people talk about growth, uh, and their, uh, their firm, they don't necessarily mean that they want 50 more clients. Um, they often mean, look, I want to grow the revenue per client by 10% or 20% per year. And so a really easy way to do that is to tell them about the different services we offer. And then you might find that actually that small business owner said, I didn't realize you offered these things. I have that need and, and great, fantastic. Um, and then that's how, that's how people often like to, to do it as well. So that is Bowman in that show. You can see that there's lots of ways to engage and connect with your audience. Um, Bowman gives you multi-channel. It's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and email in one easy to use platform. It also gives you the content library to kickstart your campaign, which is added to every week. Um, and you can just scroll down. You can also search categories here. Um, it gives you 600,000 free images and um, multiple ways to connect, such as landing pages. Um, so I think that's about us, it from us. Make sure that you um, go into the um, platform and do use um, the help and resources. Uh, you can look at FAQs, you can look at marketing resources that we looked at briefly. There are video tutorials. And within your um, app, you'll see a chat bot uh, that you can ask questions at any time. Uh, start a conversation or book a one-on-one -on -one demo. Exactly. So, um, so we've got live chats. So we answer pretty quickly. Um, as I said, if you, if you do want a demo at any time, and whether that's uh, a demo of a whole thing or you've just got a specific question and you want to run through, you know, how do I set up a landing page again? Um, that's absolutely no problem. Reach out um, on any of those ways, and we're very happy to um, assist you. Great. Well, thanks for joining us today and um, make use of that free, to, free um, trial um, and all the help within the platform. Brilliant. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.